Hello, Bethlehem and people of the interwebs. On Sunday, the readings for church I thought were pretty interesting, and especially the gospel reading and what happens immediately following it. There's two stories that are both telling the same lesson from different perspectives, and I think God's pretty good about doing that in the Bible, of telling us the same thing twice so we get the point. So this is from Matthew chapter 26, starting at verse 6. Now when Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an alabaster flask of very expensive ointment, and she poured it on Jesus' head as he reclined at table. And when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this could have been sold in a large sum and given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a beautiful thing to me. For you will always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. In pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for burial. Truly I say to you, wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Now that's where we stopped on Sunday, but the reading continues. Then one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment on, he sought an opportunity to betray Jesus. So we have a woman who gives this perfume, this ointment that's super expensive, and she breaks the jar, gives it all to Jesus. And it's so expensive and so extravagant. The disciples are like, oh, that makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable at how much money she just spent on Jesus. She wanted to give it all. And then we have Judas, who was the guy in charge of the money, who apparently is a terrible negotiator because he just goes to the chief priests and is like, hey, uh, what will you give me for Jesus? And they're like, well, 30, 30 pieces of silver. And you'd think he'd, he'd have like a counter offer or something, but no, he's like, yeah, it's good enough. And I'm told, it depends upon where you look online, that the woman who gave the perfume, that probably cost a year's wages, between $30,000 and $60,000. I'm not as certain how much the silver is worth today, but it's significantly less, probably $600. So Judah's a pretty bad negotiator here. And that's all that he wants for the life of Jesus? That's what he thinks he can get from him? And again, he says, what can I get for Jesus? And I think there's a huge contrast between these two people. Judas is thinking about, what can I get from Jesus? And the woman with the perfume is thinking about, what can I give for Jesus? And I think too often, I think about what I can get from Jesus instead of what I can give for him. We have a God who's just like the woman who gives extravagantly. We have a God who outgives us no matter what we do. And so it's difficult for us to figure out what to give for him because he doesn't have any needs. He doesn't need us, but he loves us. And he's willing to give us everything for us. He's willing to give us his life. He's willing to give us his son. And so our response from that is to simply be thankful and stand in his grace and say, thanks. Why don't we pray about that right now? Dear Lord God, we thank you for your gifts of abundant blessing. Help us to think more about what we can give to you and for you than what we can get from you. Thank you for your sacrifice. And all God's people said, Amen. Be blessed and be a blessing.